So okay then guys, I've switched to my iPhone now so you can see what I'm doing a bit better. It's at a different angle. And I'm going to start off with this champagne colour, which is the light ivory. And everything's falling. And she's got like, the light source is all the way down in the middle. And then the shadows kind of, kind of come in from the side as you blend into the black. And that's all I'm going to do. I'm say, all I'm going to say is be careful with this because it'll pick up any little bits. So if you've been colouring up, up here and there's bits here, it'll pick it up and it'll spread it across and it'll make it muddy. So just be careful with it. It will get covered with the cinnamon and probably some white after. And I'm going to do this live for about half an hour and see how far I go. Right, let's do a little section. Let me show you how I do it properly. You don't have to go hard. You just stay light. They coat quite well, these do. Honestly, I can't compare to polychrome or anything because I've never really used them. But I would say you just need to find a colour that's like ivory. It's probably a bit more yellow than ivory. Yeah, I'm just going to do this little section here, I think it'll be quicker. Um, and then I'm going to cover it with cinnamon, which, I don't know, it's like a pinky brown. Pinky beige, maybe, I don't know. I'm just going to cover that, it doesn't matter, I'm going to go into the sides as well. Because the darker colour will, will actually coat this. So I did this up here. That's basically Mars orange, strawberry, Mars black. You can see there where it's picking up bits, but it's not going to bother me on this because there's actually a lot of texture down this hand and you won't see that on this video but it actually helps with texture. But if it's in the face and it's somewhere where you don't want it, it can be a nightmare. You can spend a few hours trying to get rid of them. You can do it, a lot of, a lot of blending out and rubbing out and all that stuff, but you can do it. Like I said, I'm not using a hard pressure, I'm just going over it. doesn't matter at the minute. All I'm doing is blocking out where I want the colours to be. And I'm going to blend them out after. Right up to the edge, doesn't matter. And dark colours will go over the light, you know, providing you still got tooth. The tooth of your paper's going, you're pretty much buggered, really. But Okay, I'll leave that one there. I'm going to actually use the Mars Orange next, which is more like a tan colour, an orangey tan. You know, because of her complexion, I would say she's like maybe, I don't know, Spanish, Italian, or something like that. 
while she's been in the sun. It's actually a very good colour. Goes well well with the um, I have used the bit like the apricot as well. They go well together. I've used a little bit. I haven't used it in the hand though. I'm gonna go from the sides. You can see it's not actually orange. If I used it there, it's a lot more orange. Which seems blending with the colours I've already laid down, it's making it lighter. And it looks more like a tan colour. This part here is like, it's kind of like a green with a bit of Mars black, like a greeny purple because it's obviously the, the light is basically reflecting off something, it's like ambient light, the main light's there, so that's why I've got that line there. But my voice is going again. So you don't really need to blend them out too much, yeah, I'm just you know, blocking in where I want some of the colours. There's a big crack in the hand there, so I can put that in. It's not going to make a difference. Because it's basically Mars black in there. Be the same as this colour. Obviously, I'm following the reference the entire time that I'm doing this. It's not like I'm just, oh, this is what I've been doing for the entire time. I mean, the more the more you draw a skin, you'll get used to a set of colours that you'll always go to. It's a good idea to try not to. I mean, like I said, if you're drawing a white person, you're always going to jump to the champagne and the cinnamon. And probably the oyster. There are some pinky tones that you can get in the set as well. You will jump to them, but you're probably best off like doing some swatches. Kind of like matching your colours, and then you can get the complexion right. I'm going to add these autumn brown. You see, I'm going from like light to dark. And this is like, this is a weird colour because it's like a burgundy red. But from that, you can't really tell, it just looks like dark brown. So again, I'm just going from the sides and just following where the shadow is. You can see, it's a burgundy red. And the chestnut is the same, except it's a lot more redder. You can actually see it in there a little bit, just there. Used a little bit, it's a very powerful colour. You can either make your drawing or ruin your drawing. <laughs> As I found out. So I'm still following the reference as like, obviously she's got cracks, <clears throat> like going up a hand like that, Maybe like that. So 
the actual shadow creeps up in a little bit. Okay, so same on this side. And hopefully by doing this video that you can see what I'm doing and actually take it further. I don't know how far I'm going to get in about half an hour. But, but I picked this part because there isn't that much detail, whereas in there that would have been five hours of work. as you can imagine. It's probably why it's taking me so long. I haven't even got to the hard part yet. I'm all a jumper. It's patterned as well. Okay, and that's pretty much it for that. Okay, so I'm going to switch to the oyster now, which is an extremely light pink. It's almost white, but it's not. I don't know if you can tell on the camera, to be honest. There's a slight difference. And then I'm going to use it to blend these together a bit better. You can also use white if you don't go an oyster. But white tends to make it more like this in the middle. Like it's 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 not harsh but you can tell if you get what I mean. And you can push a bit harder with this one to blend them together. But, like I said, you've got to think in your mind how much tooth you've got left because if you ever want to make any corrections and your tooth's gone, you're going to have to start either scraping it off or rubbing it out or whatever to get it how you want it. And I find the best rubbers to use are actually um, ballpoint pen rubbers, so rubbers like this. I know it's a perfection, but if you get the one with the white rubber inside it, that's a that's a ballpoint pen rubber. You can also buy them, like sand erasers. You can get loads of them, and because these are oil based, you can't they take it off completely. But you need to be careful because you end up with patches then of like where there's no actual colouring cream, so you can be just be blending along and then you hit the patch and all of a sudden the colour changes so you have to if you're going to use them you have to make sure it's what you want very good for highlights I used them in here to pull them out <coughs> what's going on with my voice sound like Vin Diesel again maybe You can see it's kind of mushing them together. It's looking slightly patchy, but that's fine because I am going to put white in as well. So what I mean, I want the art to get rid of. But like I said, this is this hand will be textured, so you won't see it by the time I'm done. But if it was on like her cheek or something like that, oh, and you don't want it there. It's so annoying. Even though you know you can get rid of it, you know it's hours of work of scraping it off and 
rubbing it out and try and get it right so all it's done is it's picked up bits of colour that have been scribbling in the top drop down here I haven't noticed because they're tiny and then you've gone in with a light colour and you've picked it up and spread it all up where you don't want it to go as you can see there the oyster is basically pushing that colour into the other colour and that's what I want so I'm using like a medium pressure I'm not getting like mega hard the white in a minute okay so <clears throat> so what's going on with my voice um, this is the white you'll see it's not it isn't completely white you're not going to get completely white it's not like pastel where you can just like you can put anything you can put pure black down and a pastel cut straight across with white you can't do that with these you have to go from light to dark and also make sure there's no actual colour on top because as you're blending out it picks up the colour and if you don't want that colour that can be spread on so what I tend to do is I've got some sandpaper up the side you can't, can't see and I just scrape it on a bit it takes the end off it's a very good idea to get rid of that because you have the same problem with that with the bits it spreads a dark patch it's again extremely annoying you can see straight away it's going over the top of that oyster making that pink whiter makes everything else lighter but it blends it all out I said you don't have to do this you can use that col col that colourless blender that you use with the hair that I showed you on the last video but I, don't, I haven't really used that with the skin Like I said, if, this, if you think this is like you're not going to colour this section in anymore because you want it like completely white down there, you can just go as hard as you want. You know, providing you don't snap the pencil. I tend to use a combination of going hard, going soft, going hard, and you kind of blend out better you get a better transition see I'm just pushing it makes it look better already which makes it look a lot smoother and also I'm gonna go darker here I've still got the Mars black to add like I said that's pine which is a very dark green but this has a green theme so it doesn't really surprise me that whoever took the photograph has done some had like a, a some some photoshop work to make it look like some of the shadows look green I'm just pushing some highlights into there because it's not going to be a straight shadow you will get bits of highlights being picked up by the cracks in a hand it's a good idea to get a just a normal painting brush just to get rid of the dust
I say it's blowing them up pretty well. I mean, it's what he looks like, Skim. I don't really do anything. And the only pink I used was the oyster, which isn't really pink. So there, there is in the day one light fast a one that's called light light flash, and I, I you won't use them. I know you get them in polychromos as well, flash tones, but honestly, they're pointless. You're not going to use them. Just pick colors that. That you wouldn't think he used like all I've used there is use a cinnamon which is a beige color, Mars orange which is a dark orange. I'm going to use some strawberry now, for example, which again is a is a reddy orange. And that's what's happened in here. And like here for the shadows, all that's pine over the top. It's all pine, which is a dark green. I so said all this strawberry does as well. <coughs> What's going on my voice? All this strawberry is doing it's kind of influencing the Mars orange that I put down and the autumn brown. It's making them stronger. And then it's also blending with the white that's down, the oyster that's down. I'm going very lightly because it's a lot more powerful than the lighter colour. If it went really strong, you'd get like a deep orange red. I don't want that. I'm just going light. He says, keep looking at your reference. You see, I've kept a bit of highlight next to that crack. I've got pine now, which is the dark green. You can start adding your darker shade in now. Go light again, because like I said, it's more powerful than what you just laid down. And you can see you're just adding shadow, and then that'll connect you to that, and then that'll connect you to that. And that's how you can create your transitions. As you can tell from doing this one little section, it takes you hours to get it right. And go up in here. And you can see there where the tooth's gone. I'm struggling to get it down properly. It's probably from when I put this in. I've gone on to this part too much. You have to be very careful with how much tooth you're using. You have to always be thinking to yourself, like, oh, I'm going to need a bit more, don't go so hard, go a bit lighter. See that hands blending into that now. And then I'm going to add some of this Mars black and then call it a day because I think I've been going off and out now. I can't, I can't see the time. Oh, hang on. Oh, I've been going 25 minutes. It's alright. No, I don't want to use all the memory up on my phone. This is Mars Black, which is a purpley black. Because it's not totally black, 
and it's purple it blends in with all your colors and you get these really nice colors obviously if it's getting over white you get these strong purple colors so you still have to be careful because all I'm going to do is I'm putting it over the top of the pine to make that look smoother because obviously it looks a bit betty as it's picked up the tooth I say you don't have to do it this way, this is how I do it because this is, this is how I draw, I love lots of contrast, lots of black. So don't be afraid to use black. I use black and everything. It can make your work look really powerful. Again, depends on what type of artist you are. You don't have to. See, and that will make more sense when I put this bit in because that's basically pine and it's completely black around that bit of pine, you know what I mean? Let's blend this out a bit. I'm still, I'm just getting extremely light. Hardly any pressure whatsoever with this. Yeah, put a bit more on that crack. Make it look more defined. And that's Mars Black, which is one of my favourite pencils. See, it adds a lot of contrast and it blends out into your colours, and then you get like the harsh white, that's how you blend them out. You know, if I felt like that that's too harsh against that, all you have to do is use the colours you used originally. So like say you'd use your Mars Orange, just go light and go over it. You kind of push it out, push it into the colours that you're using. And basically you get a darker or a like a purpley Mars orange. Yep, see what I mean? And then you can just go back again. You know, pick up your cinnamon. Actually, I think I'll go autumn brown. And then go over it again. And you just Keep pushing it until it looks how you want it, and you get these transitions. So, I mean, it was no, nowhere near as dark as it was, and I've got the cinnamon now. You just push that autumn brown back again. It's just all about layering, go back and forth, getting it how you want it. Like I said, I found it helps if you remember how much tooth you need. Got the oyster now. To push that cinnamon back. Pushing relatively hard as well because your, your tooth is starting to disappear now, so you've got basically push hard to smudge it and make it blend. As you can see. And 
you go. Just it off. <clears throat> right then guys, I'm going to call that it because I've been going for half an hour now. Well, it's probably longer with the little talk out at the beginning, but I hope from that you can tell how you can do some skin tones. You know, take it from there, see how you go. Uh, let me know if it helped you. Um, if you want to see this finished, or look at my progressions, you can follow me on Instagram or Facebook. I do post progressions there, so you know, leave me a comment if you do. And if you like this video, if you thought it helped, please like, subscribe, comment, and thank you for watching.